This time we'll look at five more classic middleweight motorcycles from the 1970s. Before we start, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. The middleweight class was particularly well served during the 1970s. With this in mind, here are five excellent middleweight motorcycles that were available during the 1970s. The Suzuki GS550 The Suzuki GS550 was introduced in 1977 and just like its bigger brother the 750 was very much inspired by Kawasaki Z models and indeed the GS engine is equally robust but in the case of the little GS it's placed in a nice nimble fine handling little chassis which means that despite a relatively modest peak power figure of around 50 horsepower this bike is great fun on a twisty A road Top speed though is a fairly respectable 112 miles an hour. On the front there's twin discs and there's a drum brake on the rear which, typical 1970s, work fairly well, although not massively impressive. Later models of course used all round disc brakes and cast wheels. As you might expect from the Japanese, the bike is generally solid and reliable. Although the finish isn't quite as good as some of its competitors and a major weak spot for these bikes is a regulator rectifier this is not the most expensive item available and can give trouble on some machines. Small niggles aside though, this is an excellent bike and one that had a good long production run for its type. The machine ran well into the 1980s with various style bodyworks. There's no doubt the little GS can make an excellent choice if you're looking for your very first classic Japanese motorcycle. A solid, reliable and most of the areas that can give problems are easily fixable and the replacement of the regulator rectifier with more modern equipment solves really what is the main Achilles heel of these bikes. The 550 was a really big seller in its time and I think encouragingly there seemed to be an awful lot of survivors out there on the market. So if you're looking to pick up a nice Japanese sort of mini superbike this could be an excellent choice for a first go and it's easily A2 restrictable too a kit is available online. If you're on a restricted license this is a really good choice. The GS may not be the most glamorous 70s four-cylinder bike, but it is perhaps one of the best. Motor Goods is V50 and V35 models. Although sometimes referred to as transverse feature wings, because the cylinders stick out either side, it's probably more correct to turn these engines in line, because in fact their crankshaft runs along the line of the motorcycle. The first gutsy to use the layout appeared in the 1960s, although it was the much later small block engines which we're talking about here. These were designed by Lino Tonti and were ground up redesign of the earlier models, featuring from the start an easy to remove oil filter, heron heads and a much smaller, more compact design and a completely different chassis too. The machines first appeared in the late 70s, initially as a 350, quickly followed by a 500. They were available in sporty and cooking flavours, and while lacking the power and all out talk of their bigger brothers, the bikes were much more nimble and a great fun to ride. Fuel consumption was excellent from the Heron Head, and generally these bikes are pretty reliable. By the standards of the time, these bikes can feel surprisingly refined, and the brakes are pretty good too, but when you ride one of the early bikes alongside the later V7s, the lineage is very clear, and I think the fact that these bikes have been on sale for so long proves the general sturdiness of the all-round design. These are great character for little bikes and are well worth a ride out. The Kawasaki Z650 Kawasaki Z650 or KZ650 as it's known in North America is a 652cc across the frame four cylinder motorcycle produced by Kawasaki between 1976 and 1983. The machine was conceived as a middleweight version of the mighty Z1 or Z1 and is very much the epitome of what people consider as the ubiquitous Japanese motorcycle UJM. Like its bigger brother 
the 650 has a reputation for having an absolutely bulletproof motor. Riders of later machines will be really surprised at just how torquey these motors are. And although a middleweight, the bike's top end of 67 horsepower made it pretty much equal to a lot of 750s around at the same time. Add to that the compact size and excellent agility of the bike, and the Z650 made a formidable package. And is perhaps the best of the Kawasaki Z series of the 1970s. Now I know a lot of people will be hooked up on more is better, but actually sometimes less is more. And the fact that this bike doesn't have quite as much power as its bigger brothers just doesn't matter on a good A road. This is a great bike with more than adequate performance. If it's a match for many of the 750s and bigger of its time, well, I think that's their problem. Certainly not the Z650s. The Motor Marini, three and a half. Motor Marini began motorcycle production in 1937. And during the 50s and 60s, the Bologna factory produced a range of small capacity sporty bikes, such as the Satabello. However, today the best known machine is the 3.5. This 72 degree V twin 344cc engine, which bears some resemblance actually to the Motor Guzzi engines, having both a heron head and overhead valve actuation. Small it may have been, the little 3.5 had an excellent chassis and fantastic brakes by the standards of the time. So it's great fun even today on a twisty A road. The engine was a rev happy little thing and didn't really produce maximum torque until around 6000 rpm. The bike came in essentially two flavours. There was the standard or Strada version with 35 horsepower and the 39 horsepower, at least claimed, sporty model. The problem with both these bikes is they were extremely expensive, costing as much in the UK as a CB750 Honda. In an effort to improve the mid-range torque of the engine, it was enlarged out to 500cc. But this machine was never as popular as the 3.5 and, and offered very little extra performance in reality. On British roads, because of their high price, not surprisingly the Marini is a fairly rare sight, was new and still is today. They do have a real cult following, so if you want to try and buy one, you'd best dig deep. The Yamaha XS 650. Yamaha's XS650 is often described as the bike that killed the British bike industry. This is of course a massive misunderstanding of the complexity of what went wrong for Britain, but nevertheless it definitely did steal sales away from bikes like the Bonneville, particularly in that all important US market. And this is not a machine that came from nowhere to challenge the British. In fact, its heritage dates all the way back to 1955 and a single overhead cam 500 twin called the Hosk. Hosk was a smaller Japanese company that was bought out by Showa, now famous for its suspension units, and these in turn were bought out by Yamaha in 1960. The 650 first hit the streets in 1969 and included such modern features as unit construction and a single overhead cam. And of course, there were horizontally split crankcases, unlike those of most British bikes which were vertically split. This tended to make the engine much easier to keep oil tight. In the US, the bike was very popular for dirt track racing and was even used by works rider Kenny Roberts. Like its British counterparts, the machine used a 360 degree crank. This of course meant that some vibration was present. This was particularly noticeable on the Yamaha at lower RPMs. To counteract this, dampening was added to the engine mounts and some other components from 1974 onwards. The crankshaft itself was extremely robust and ran on three roller bearings. This meant that the engine had a well-deserved reputation for toughness. So reliable was it that it managed to outlive its replacements and would remain in the range until 1982. Outwardly, at least for most of that time, the bike would remain little changed. Although there would of course be sensible additions. Electric start was added in 72 and of course disc brakes would replace those early drum brakes. The XS was popular throughout its production run and would remain a cult bike for many years. But the slump in the US economy in 1982 would see an end to the Yamaha sales, and it was withdrawn that year. But because of the large number sold, and the relative robustness of the bike, there are quite a few still left available on the second hand market. 
or the cold status of these bikes means that prices can be surprisingly high. Well, I hope you enjoyed that selection of classic middleweights. Tell me, what are your favourite middleweights? Comment below. If you enjoyed that video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, thank you very much for watching.